पुराने गाने पुराने दोस्त घर की यादें और इलायची चाय उबलते पानी में इलायची चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालें कुछ देर गैस पे उबलने दें इलायची चाय तभी अच्छी बनेगी जब आप यूज करेंगे रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क जो बना है ताजे दूध से इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे इतना सिंपल घर की याद दिला दी रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री विद योर होस्ट शेन फिलिप On this episode, we look at the extraordinary success of a man who at the front end of his career almost had to be brainwashed in order to complete his college and go on to become a chartered accountant. He then went on to do multi-billion dollar deals as a financial consultant, and when he was asked, "How do you want to give back?" he said, "I want to start a school. I'm all for education." presented by Nokia inspired by Cadillac Dinesh Kotari hails from the northwestern Indian state of Rajasthan he came to the UAE as an accountant and rose through the ranks to become the CEO of a major group at the age of 28 he went back to India on a hunch and then returned to the UAE to set up some of the finest schools in the region Dinesh Kotari, welcome to Rainbow Top Guns. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you very much for inviting me on your show. It's a pleasure to be with you. Tell us, how did it, how did it all start? Where did life begin for you? Well, uh, it's almost six decades that I have to roll back my time. I was born in Rajasthan, Jodhpur. When I was about three, three and a half, I moved to Kota to live with my grandparents. Until class eighth, I did my education there, which is middle school. and uh, i went to a gandhi medium government school after that uh, i moved to calcutta where my parents lived by the time so secondary education i did in calcutta not being a very brilliant student i moved to rajasthan back to jodhpur and that's where i studied my undergrad bcom where i lived for 3 years with my grandfather again and this time i lived with my mother's father first year bcom didn't do too well and uh, was more involved in sports and extracurricular activities in the college uh, so I hardly gave my time to studies so one evening he called me in his office he was a lawyer by profession and he told me that if you don't study what will you do and uh, that moment hit me i went back in my room study room and literally sat whole night thinking that if i don't study what really will i do and why at this age I got a comment like that from my grandfather. I put in my best, did my BCom with the first division. So you'd finally set your sights on becoming a chartered accountant. It was a desire of my mother and my father, my parents, that I get into chartered accountancy. And therefore, after my BCom uh, qualification in Jodhpur, I went off to Hyderabad to do my chartered accountancy. As soon as I finished my exams, I started applying for jobs. I got calls from various interviews, and one of the interview calls I got was from A. F. Ferguson and Company Chartered Accounting Firm. And I came to Mumbai, and uh, I was staying with an uncle of mine. And he asked me what were my plans for the job, and I said, "Look, I've got a job offer from Ferguson, and that's where I'm going to join." So he said, "Why don't you work in ICICI?" Now, ICICI in those days was not a bank; it was a development institution. lending money for industrial houses and affiliated to world bank it was like a dream job so i joked with him i said you are saying as if i have the job from icici but i am joining ferguson i don't have a job with icici and they don't normally recruit through advertisements they is more like referral appointments so my uncle knew somebody there so he fixed up my interview i had almost eight or nine interviews and went on for two months and i had no job to cut long story short when i got fed up after 2 months i went and joined ferguson so i thought maybe maybe i am not found suitable so i went and joined ferguson and the same day there was a call from icici at my house 
uh, asking me to come for another interview. So I went back to ICICI, where I had interviewed the managing director at that time, Mr. S.S. Mehta. I had requested that I like to join uh, project appraisal department, which was the cream of the institution. And officers were not appointed in the appraisal department unless they were approved by the chairman. So they said, you'll have to have a final interview with the chairman. So I waited for four hours, and finally I had interviewed at 8 o'clock in the evening with the chairman. At 9 o'clock in the evening, I got my appointment letter. So I'm starting tomorrow morning. With finance comes romance. With money in your pocket, you must have been eyeing a bride-to-be. Yes, when I had a job in my pocket, the proposal started flowing to my parents. And um, I left the decision to my mother to find uh, her daughter-in-law. So what was the early years of your marriage like, considering that you barely even knew each other before you got married? I think this question didn't even cross my mind. And I don't think it crossed her mind that uh, how shall we spend time with each other if we don't know each other. It was a foregone conclusion that we are married and uh, we have to make the marriage institution respect it and live together. This question of you knowing me, you're not doing what I'm wanting, or she expecting anything, she didn't expect nothing from me. And when husband and wife don't have expectation from each other, but they do it because uh, they think that's an institution they are together. In our culture, what is important? Would she blend with my family? Would I blend with her family? Uh, other day I was telling uh, someone that if the Kothari family was to divide, and I had to see if somebody who will take my side, none. They all will stand by her. And that's how she has blended herself with the family. I think even today we are trying to know each other. Even today we make efforts to uh, make sure that uh, we respect each other's uh, wishes and habits and likings and dislikings. And then Dinesh Katari gets the big break of his life a job in the UAE in the 1970s, something youngsters of the time could only dream of. But more on that after the break. He is a very good husband. He has kept so much in my mind. He has supported me in every way. And the most important thing is that whatever they do, they do so well and they support their family. And the most important thing is that they do so well. एक ये रहा है कि जो कुछ करना है अपने हाथ से करना है सब कुछ मैं ही करूंगा और इनके साथ में हमेशा रहूं। He made a comment to me that I know you have been very successful, but uh, you have not done anything for the society. So why don't you do something? And that day this thought came in my mind that I would not like to do anything which is community centric, anything which is religion centric, but do something which can touch everybody's life, and that is education. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. थकान का एक ही उपाय है, एक कप कड़क चाय. उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर, चाय की पत्ती, चीनी. कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूँ ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवैपोरेटेड मिल्क. इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालते हैं. जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए, गैस बंद कर दी. Rainbow evaporated milk. Chai ka perfect match. Rainbow Top Gun Season 3. Welcome back. We're in conversation with Mr. Dinesh Katari, a prominent and respected name in the field of education in the UAE. Mr. Katari, you were telling us about how you landed your first job with Mr. Abdul Rahman Bukhater. Yes, yeah, Shant. Uh, it was uh, Mumbai, then Bombay, where I worked, as I was telling you before, in ICICI. And I had a friend from India, Jodhpur, Mr. Mafat Raj, the owner of Kalpatru Builders. They had started a partnership with Mr. Bukhater to, for a contracting company in Sharjah. And they're looking for a finance manager. So he asked me that, uh, why don't you come to Dubai and 
work with us. So I joined the company Eastern Contracting as a finance manager, which was a joint venture between Kalpatru Builders and Bukhater. Worked there for a while, and then I got fed up with the job. It was, became very routine in a contracting company. So one day I just thought of sending my family back to India and come back to India. So we packed up everything, uh, sent my wife and little son to the airport, and went to see goodbye to Mr. Bukhater. When I landed up uh, in his office, I uh, had a brief chat, and I said, look, I'm going to India. He thought I was going on annual vacation, so he asked me a question, when are you coming back? And I said, I was not coming back. I'm going for good. So he made me sit down and uh, talk to him to find out what the problem was. I come from ICICI, project financing, new projects, new ideas, debt syndication. That's what I'm good at. And I'm not doing any of those things, so I wish to go back. Those were the years Bukhatri Group was growing, so he offered me a job in one of his, uh, his project management companies to do debt syndication and fundraising for the various new projects they were doing. That's how I stayed back. After a couple of years, the projects were finished, and I was again without a specific job. So I went to say goodbye to him again, and he said, why are you always in a hurry? Why do you, every time there's nothing happening, you want to quit? I said, look, I don't see any job. The projects are over, the funding is done, they're up and about and running. And that's the time he said, uh, I transfer you to the parent company as an executive director. And that's when I became the CEO of the group. That's how I landed the job. Amazing, at, at age 28. At the age 28. You must have been one of the youngest CEOs. I think so. He was an awesome father. Um, you know, we saw him as much as time would permit, naturally, given his role. It was always daunting. I mean, seeing someone who had become a larger-than-life figure in what was a very small country at that time. Um, you know, from sports to education, all of my math, etc., was done with him. And he carved out time for us uh, when, whenever possible. So, um, you know, if I, I really had to sum it up, it's, it's really a mirror reflection of himself, of what he's tried to allow us to be. So, in, in respective of what he's achieved and my parents have achieved in their life, uh, we've never been allowed to lose sight of where we came from and who we are. And irrespective of the successes that we may or may not have, we'll likely still be the people that we are uh, today. Have you been able to instill the same family values that you had growing up with your kids? I think uh, so, and that has been the effort. And that has been one of the predominant reasons why I left uh, such a wonderful job that I had with Bukhater. It was one of those trips when my parents were here. My son was being called by their friends to come and play, and uh, he refused to, he basically told them I can't come because I've got guests at home. And at that moment, I realized that uh, if grandparents are guests, then my being well-paid executive and CEO is all meaningless. And at that point, I took a decision that uh, it's time to go back. And I'm so glad today that uh, both my son and daughter uh, have the same values. And that was a compulsive reason for me to leave. But in hindsight, I think uh, I made a better investment. So you're back in India now. What are you doing? What's the plan of action? How are you going to approach your career in this second chapter? I knew one course was clear that I wanted to get in the same line, which I had done. And to a great extent, what I was doing in Bukhatra Group was the same. So I went and set up my consulting practice. Having lived in uh, Dubai and having had a network of people, uh, I got into merchant banking business. So I started getting a lot of business to help Indian companies raise equity here. I met a banker friend and who had mandate to sell a very large business in India, uh, which was chloride with the excite batteries. And they were looking for some equity. So he said, can you help us raising some money in the Middle East? So we came here. We got two major Arab investors, and whom I had known. And they put in about four or five million pounds of equity in that business at that time. And obviously, that was my first breaking path in my consulting merchant banking practice. And thereafter, for many years, I went and continued to do merchant banking business till almost 95. But the IPO markets crashed in 1995. Absolutely, and uh, with that crash came the grinding halt of my merchant banking business because I had specialized so much in that one segment, so I didn't focus anything else. 
So you weren't doing what you know best. What next? You see, in one of my trips to Mumbai after that, I was staying in Oberoi Hotel, and a friend of mine introduced me a gentleman from Switzerland that I ran a consulting, financial consulting practice, and they were looking to acquire some cement business in India. So uh, he asked me to look at one of the proposals they had received. I looked at it, and I said that was not a good business proposal they had received, and they should not be investing in that. For almost eight years or nine years, we looked at every possible cement plant up for sale in India for them. In every possible cement plant, we didn't find it acceptable. So I kept on telling no. It went on, and one day, uh, the same gentleman rang me up, and he disclosed to me that he's in dialogue with ACC to buy ACC. And what did I think this time? This is a must-do deal. Valuation is not the issue. You can't get better. He closed the deal, and that was the biggest transaction ever handled by me as an investment banker or a consultant. This company was wholesome who bought controlling interest of ACC for one and a half billion dollars. Wow. So when did you make your first million? I wouldn't remember the year, but I made it at a pretty young age, before I turned 30. So you make your first million before you're 30. Fast forward a little bit. You're in your 40s. You're doing multi-billion dollar transactions. And then all of a sudden, somehow, you get into education. How does that work? My getting into education was not by my design. It was purely accidental. Way back in 97, I was in Jodhpur attending a wedding in the month of December. The gentleman D.R. Mehta is the greatest philanthropist in India. The one who's famous for the Jaipur foot? Yes. He made a comment to me that I know you have been very successful. You have done well for yourself. But uh, you have not done anything for the society. So why don't you do something, return back something to the society? And that day, uh, this thought came in my mind that I would not like to do anything which is community-centric, anything which is religion-centric, uh, but do something which can touch everybody's life, and that is education. When and how did the first school happen? Well, it almost happened at the same time, Mr. Mehta, and showed me a building, which was a community school, a small school, but not running well. So he said, why don't you take it over? And next day morning, he called all the trustees of that particular school and asked them a question, how much money do you lose? They said, we lose half a million rupees a year. So he looked at me and said, your rent will be half a million rupees, which you'll pay to them. And they'll run the high school in the afternoon session, and you start your school in the morning session. I came to Delhi, and uh, through Grinley's Bank, I had my interview set up with Delhi Public School. And uh, they suggested that they go col collaborations, so why don't you talk to them? I met them. Uh, explained what I was wanting to do and uh, set up our first school in Jodhpur where we today have 5,000 students. It is run not-for-profit. The entire thing is given back to the society. We also have about 200 children from the weaker section of the society who have provided free education out of those 5,000 students that we have. With his first school firmly in place, Dinesh Katari looked back to the UAE where he had a small marble and stone business. But more on that story after the break. He is one of the people in this world that has got the most integrity that I have ever come across. Um, he's a very cultured person, very compassionate person, a very generous human being, and I'm very lucky to have him for my father-in-law. Because if each one of us educate one underprivileged child, I think the society will be a wonderful place to live. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. This is not a phone to just capture beautiful things. This phone captures feelings. It memorizes dream machines and the goosebumps you got when they screamed. To record a jump into the unknown and relive the madness, the dry mouths, the exploding chests. Introducing the large screen new Nokia Lumia 1520 with a full HD display, full HD video recording and distortion free sound capture. Don't just record, relive. When you shoot for the moon, you build your courage, test your passion and persevere. The all-new 2014 Cadillac CTS, a bold journey. Gapshap ke saath to ek kap chai banti hai. 
मसाला चाय इलायची लौंग और दालचीनी इसको कूट लें उबलते पानी में डालें इसके अंदर चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालिए बढ़िया मसाला चाय बनाने का मेरा एक छोटा सा राज है ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे ये हुई ना मसालेदार बात रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप कॉन सीजन थ्री Welcome back to Rainbow Top Guns. We're here with Mr. Dinesh Katari, a chartered accountant, an entrepreneur, but most of all, a philanthropist. Mr. Katari, tell me, out of all the things you've done, I mean, you've been in business for decades. What have been those moments that really emotionally moved you? Those ones that perhaps made you even shed a tear? In Rajasthan, the female education is pretty low, so we started afternoon session for girls education. And over a period of time, we found the girls' mothers and grandmothers started coming to the school, and we thought we should also help them in learning. So we started uh, doing adult education in our program, afternoon program. And I found when I asked uh, these ladies that will one of them like to read something out to me, the person who got up was a 75-year-old woman. She started reading, and that was a moment. It touched me most. And when I asked her that what really helped her in the whole cause of learning and reading and writing, her biggest achievement was that now she can write a letter to her own son. She does not need anybody's help. And when her son writes a letter, she does not have to wait for the postmaster to come and read. She can read it herself. I think that was the most emotional moment for me, that a woman who's biggest achievement was to read and write so you know these are the moments when you feel that you've written back something to the society these are <clears throat> these are just the moments you cherish tell me how did you get involved in education in the uae i think uh, the three four years i spent uh, the students ch children teachers in jodhpur and i realized that this can be very effective tool to empower people. So uh, I thought of uh, uh, replicating that in Sharjah. I had visualized a project of student strength of 1,250 in Sharjah in year three. Today we are 6,000 students and that inspired us and uh, three years later we set up the second school in DPS Gardens. Then we set up the third school and then we diversified a little bit in non-Indian curriculums as well. So uh, that's how it started. Mr. Katari is the head of a very large extended family. What I love about him and what I find extremely enduring is that he can relate to every person, whether it is a child who is three years old or whether it is a much older person, he has something special to say to them. A great visionary, a unique leader, and a person who is very good and understanding. I know Mr. Kothari so well because I have been an ex-student, so from 2001, I have been seeing him as a person. He's very humble, generous, and he's given us an opportunity to work over here, given us a platform where we can show us, showcase our talents. Extremely inspiring speeches which he gives. And I've actually seen the school grow past seven years. How it was when I was a student and as its staff here, how it is. He's brought the school from where to where. It's, it's a really long journey, which we have seen personally as a student. I knew Mr. Kotari from the beginning, from day one. And I know him uh, very well. He is a very smart and very good person, dealing with us as a family, not as a boss. He's a man with a far-sighted vision and who executes lots of positivity. He is one person who has held the cause of the school together with staff and students alike. I look up to him with great respect and honor. Do you have any advice for the youngsters out there? I have less of an advice, uh, Shane, and more of a request to make. 
the request I have to everyone is, let's take an oath that during our lifetime, we'll educate one underprivileged child. That's my request to everyone. Because if each one of us can perform that obligation to educate one underprivileged child, I think the society will be a wonderful place to live. That is, that is a very true statement, I imagine. We could all do that. We it's could actually all do within it. our grasp. Absolutely. So uh, that's the request I want to make. And uh, let's value our respect. We must be proud of our heritage. We must be proud of what we are. And we should have faith in ourselves. The rest will leave it to destiny. Dad has inspired so many people. People who meet him are always in awe of him, and rightly so. But to me, he's always been Dad. I owe everything to him. I am everything because of him. He is truly my hero. Dad, you were someone I will always look up to, no matter how tall I've grown. And if I can even be half the person that you are, I will consider myself a very successful person. Mr. Dinesh Katari, I have to thank you for coming on Rainbow Top Guns and sharing your story. It was actually both inspiring, insightful, and touching at the same time. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Shem, having me on your program. And we hope to meet again and fulfill some of our words. Well, that's it then, the story of Dinesh Katari, the story of hard work, perseverance, but most of all, the story of an entrepreneur who's committed to the community. I think there's a lesson here for all of us that we could all give a little more or do a little more for those who have less than we do. Well, that brings us to the end of yet another fantastic season of Rainbow Top Guns. Thanks for watching, and I have to personally thank you for making us the number one locally produced show across all South Asian channels. Stay tuned for next season as we bring you more inspiration, more self-made billionaires, more self-made millionaires than ever before. This is your host, Shane Phillips, saying Masalama. The concept of uh, joint families are not there anymore. Because that's where the family values come, that's where from the bonding comes. And uh, these values cannot be taught. You have to live in those values. So only if they stay together, if they spend time together, they automatically get transferred. Therefore, I think uh, young parents must try to do that. Take initiative, either get the grandparents to stay with them or get the children to go and stay with them. So yes, everybody should make effort to make it practical at least once a year.